Hi friends! Today I wanted to hop back in to Deep Space Divinity, one of the Lux quads that released with the Celestial Odyssey Holiday Collection from Pat McGrath Labs. I already have a first impressions video up looking at the product details as well as the swatches. Before we roll in to the comparison I want to make with Interstellar Icon, the Lux quad that released for last year's holiday collection. Hi, if it's your first time here, I'm Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you're returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. If you want to check out my virtual class schedule, please sign up for my newsletter down below. I wanted to compare Deep Space Divinity to Interstellar Icon color to color because initially, and I agree, when you see these palettes side by side, they look very similar. So I thought it'd be fun. This is not to make you buy Deep Space Divinity fam. I just enjoy providing resources for you in deciding what is best makeup decision buying wise. Secondly, I wanted to address the fact that I had said that when looking at the Deep Space Lux Quad photo on the website, I immediately assumed that the pan sizes would be the same from last year and 2019. So I did place a photograph on my community board, but I wanted to place them here side by side because I had thought, oh wow, they did the same photo. They technically, when you put the photo side by side, these pans look smaller than the one from last year and 2019. So the compact is the same, but the pan size is smaller and the price is less. This is $54, this is 58. Now, many of you had wished that the brand was more transparent about that. And in an ideal world, I agree. I would love for all brands, whatever, not even from beauty, whatever sector of the industry, if there is a change taking place that the consumers will notice right away, that ideally, sure, the brand will present that information before the product is bought. That, in theory, that's easy and it works. I'm not too sure if that would be practical because... Again, I mentioned this in a, in a reply to one of the comments. It is so nuanced and I don't understand a lot about makeup manufacturing, how all these travel bans, delays, and what have you are impacting not only Pat McGrath Labs, but several brands. And it just seems to me that is a lot more complicated than Pat McGrath just sending out an email saying, look, we didn't have this, so this is what happened. I think if they were to tell us what really went down, it will be like a freaking pamphlet. Is that practical to send out to all of your customers just to say why your pan sizes are smaller? I don't know if it is. And listen, you can disagree with me. That's why I love to have these discussions. And I didn't go through all the comments from my last video yet. I just think this is a little more complicated than I'm making it out to be. And yes, it is disappointing that the Lux quads that we are so familiar with in terms of the pan size Unfortunately, we do not have the same for this year. In addition to the pan size, we have a different lid, which is something, well, there's two things. On the website, the image does show the hieroglyph style logo and not the Pat McGrath font logo. So that is something I think they should change. The other discrepancy is the fact that on the Lux Quad box, it says total 4.4 grams, but on the website, it says four times 1.75 grams. If I were to divide 4.4 by four, that's 1.1 grams. So that is one discrepancy in addition to the photograph of the compact front. But in terms of the pan sizes, if you put the pictures up against each other, they do look smaller. Some people were able to pick that up from the get. I just thought I was going to get the same pan size, so I'm mistaken on that for sure. We are getting less product, but we are definitely not being charged the same. I know people thought that we were still being charged $58. We are not. $4 less, is that a huge difference? No, but it is still a difference and it's not the same price. And I could understand why someone would be upset if we are getting less product and being charged the same thing. But when you think about this, and I actually brought this up in 2019 in regards to her Blitz Astro Quads, that people were up in arms about the fact that one quad, specifically the ones with, again, the Blitz and Astral shades retailed for like $65 and you're only getting four shades, but the pans were the same size from this one here and you compare that to a Lux brand like Chanel and the pans are a lot smaller and it is the same price. I know there are different tiers of Lux. I get it. 
But when you break it down like that, okay, I still felt you were getting a reasonable amount of product for the Blitz Astro Quad price. And even though these are smaller, when I saw them first, I was like, oh, they're definitely smaller than last year's and 2019. But I think this is still pretty good in terms of 1.1 grams or 1.75, however much. I don't even know how much it weighs at this point because again, there are two different numbers from on the box and what's on the website. And this perspective is coming from someone who loves Pat McGrath, who adores the brand. I do receive PR, but I also buy a lot of their products. So yes, my angle is not going to be as critical as someone who is not a fan like me. Absolutely fam, that is my bias. I would think that Pat does not have any malicious intentions in deceiving her customers. I think this is the reality of owning a bigger brand. A smaller one, like an indie brand, is going to have an easier time doing whatever they want. They have total control of their product, of their social media, of how they present their brand. I think the logistics are far different for bigger brands like Pat McGrath Labs. Is that an excuse? It is, but I think it's a valid one because that is the reality in terms of how different brands run their logistics for manufacturing and distribution. All that to say, I don't think this has to be as dramatic as we think it could be. I think it's important for us to point out those discrepancies, but I don't think we should be totally upset over it because in the end, although there are smaller pans, who knows who did the website? Maybe they were mistaken okay, about the grams on the box versus what they put on the website. So one did not put the right photo of the compact front, but it is $4 cheaper. So I'm just gonna leave it at that and keep my eyes open for any other updates Pat McGrath Labs decides to provide us. Okay, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. For those who are like, you know what? I don't need Deep Space Divinity. I have Interstellar Icon, you know what, I'm good. I agree, if you feel just based on from what you see on the website that you don't need uh, DSD, <laughs> that you could hold off. But you know what, I thought, why don't I just dedicate one video in comparing these quads? We'll do side-by-side -side swatches because I did like a few in the last video. I just wanna focus on these quads. If you wanna see another deep dive into bronze borgales, let me know. I'll compare that quad to Eternal Eden from the Divine Rose quad, as well as Veristic Vixen, the quad that released with the Divine Blush collection. Let's start with Interstellar Icon first. Now this was the Lux quad from last year's release. This did not have the special shades. It had more of a mixture of different metallic finishes. There are no mattes in here, unlike what's in Deep Space Divinity. So let's start off with Golden Polaris, which is a beautiful gold champagne metallic. Hypnotique, which is a purple blue duochrome shade. Blue Blood, which is found in Decadence Mothership 4. And Divine Dahlia, which is a beautifully shiny metallic shade. We have all metallics here, and Blue Blood, as you see, I think is the most subdued. But something I always pine over in regards to Decadence Mothership 4 is the fact that the metallic formula is ultra smooth and very appropriate to use on its own. One and done shades. You got 10 moments in that palette to just slap on the lid and through the crease under the lash line and be done. Although it's not as shiny, shiny, sparkly as Hypnotique, it's very easy to blend and use. I would argue the same thing for Divine Dahlia. It has a little more texture than Blue Blood. You can still place it all over the lid and the blurred edges of that color is like a taupey type of bronze shade. It looks so gorgeous on its own too. Very winterfall appropriate, I might add. Now into Deep Space Divinity, we have Golden Aurora and Golden Polaris seems to be a lot cooler in tone compared to Aurora. Rose Nocturne, which is a matte shade that we don't have in Interstellar Icon. It's like a beautiful warm burgundy. And I'm definitely still on the burgundy train from loving retro so much. Alien Moon, which is the maroon to teal duochrome shade, classic duochrome combination. And my, my apologies, the name left me, but a comment which I think valid that she had said, this reminds her 
of the Makeup Geek and Manu MUA 9 Pam palette. Remember that one, fam? It had this combination, the reddish burgundy. I think that one was a little more red leaning. This a little more burgundy with this teal and maroon shift shade. Uh, Glass Bull is the ColourPop Classic 2. And lastly, Dawn Fantasia, which is a beautiful bronzy copper shade. So here are both side by side. I immediately detect a cooler feel from Interstellar Icon and a warmer, more gem tone feel from Deep Space Divinity. I do think before we go into the demo that Interstellar Icon is more appropriately used as one and done shadows. For instance, if you were to use Blue Blood to blend out Divine Dahlia or Hypnotique or even golden polaris it'll be a very intense look because again blue blood is all metallic so i'm all for putting a metallic shade through my crease i think is a great way to go but since each shade all the shades in here are so full bodied you got a full body shade with a full body texture it's gonna have a lot of impact on your eyes whereas if you rely on rose nocturne it's a deep matte it's definitely not like uh the mattes that are in celestial divinity the the bigger 18 pan palette with those softer more neutral brown hues so you're going to get a lot more impact from this but it's still going to have a little less than blue blood or even divine dahlia so i thought why don't we pair these shades together in the same manner in terms of technique just so we could see and with that said why don't you come in a little closer <gasps> that's enough lids are prepped i thought why don't we start with hypnotique all over the lid I'll use my finger for this because Hypnotique has a little more texture than oh, the names. The names. Alien Moon is a lot smoother in terms of consistency. And I think Hypnotique is more appropriately used as a star lid color where maybe you have already placed a matte or a satin shade on the crease. Whereas Alien Blood, as you saw from my demo in the first video, you can blend that through your crease and it just be gorgeous. That could be a one and done moment on lid and crease. So again, going into Alien Moon, I'll apply in the same manner, but perhaps you can detect the difference just from this application alone, how smoother it is in terms of consistency. Now, it's not gonna have the same amount of shine. I think that's something you have to uh, sacrifice or, or trade with when it comes to the shine. You're going to have more texture in there just because of how the pigments are formulated versus something that's smoother, although shiny, is not going to have the same amount of vibrancy and dazzle. Using my Bichotto brush to blend out the edges, and this is what I did in my first video. I used a little bit of Rose Nocturne to blend out the edges, and the burgundy base in Alien Moon is really intense so i'm just going to put a little bit of rose nocturne here to kind of blur out the edges and make it appear more even i'm bringing it out really far because you know i i just i committed you know what i mean so this has a lot of punch i would recommend that you keep it lower under the crease unlike what i did i brought it way too high now if we were to make a parallel move go into interstellar icon maybe apply blue blood in the same manner and I am using a blender brush on purpose just so you can see how easy it is to blend Blood Moon through the crease, even though it's a metallic shade. In the same manner that I apply Rose Nocturne on my other eye, I'm placing it on the outer V first, pulling it through the crease, and then just out a little bit to make that point. This is how I typically like to wear my eyeshadow. You could keep it in tighter, closer to your lash line rounder you don't have to pull this out into the point that i am putting a little more hypnotique on the center to add back in what i blended away all right so we have like a warmer moment here with rose nocturne and now we have here more plum and bluish in color golden polaris on the inner part of the lid here overlapping hypnotique and i'm pulling it under in towards the lower lash line and why not i'll take blue blood under the lash line here as well i'll connect the top now something you run into is the risk of fallout anytime you blend out a metallic shade because it's not formulated to be the same as a matte you're going to get some fallout so i got hypnotique a little bit here when i was 
blending in blue blood. So I would suggest if you want to prevent that, you either do your eye makeup first or you apply blue blood first and then hypnotic after with your finger. Taking Alien Moon under the lash line here because I want to invite back in that beautiful teal flip. And then Golden Aurora, which is warmer than Polaris. Polaris has a little more pink to it. And you can see that Golden Aurora has a lot more yellow. Overlapping Alien Moon and a little bit of Rose Nocturne here. Getting more interstellar icon here on the picture because I think it goes so nicely with Blue Blood. All right, let's apply some lashes. In honor of the Lisa Eldridge recent drop, I'm applying Velvet Affair. Why don't I wear these more often? Shame on you. Here is demo number one. Immediately, I just see interstellar icon being cooler overall and because of rose nocturne and the maroon shift in alien moon just makes for a warmer eye look even with the teal from alien moon on the left or or your right and lashes i have well you know what i actually don't know these are ariel from chandelier because i think i mixed them up but there's something. Now I want to go into Divine Dahlia and compare it to like Cyber Bronze, right? Because Cyber Bronze is going to be a lot warmer than Divine Dahlia. That's going to be topier. You know, mix it up, see what we got. And I'll see you in a bit. Demo number two, want to hop into Divine Dahlia. One of my most favorite shades from last year. Topi anything. Just that metal look. Oh my goodness me. So like what I did with Hypnotique, I started with my finger because I want to get the majority of the product on my lid to achieve the most intensity and impact. Because I started with the lid first, you will run the risk of fallout when trying to blend out a texture like Divine Dahlia. Just go slowly or as I mentioned before, Apply your eye makeup first and then follow with your complexion and cheek products. That would just be the easiest. So you could go ham on as much blending as you want to do. I'm just taking it very slowly simply because I want to eliminate the risk of fallout. This is a Bishoto eyeshadow brush. I believe it's Sokoho Goat Hair. Even though it looks like a shader, it's very fluffy and has nice pickup. So I could grab a reasonable amount of product and take my time in blending it out in a way that I want it to shape. So as you see, I didn't rely on a matte to blend out the edges, but they look nice and blurred. It doesn't invite another matte, meaning it doesn't look like I need to follow up with another matte. If you insist on doing so, I would say maybe go in with the loose powder. I have Pat's loose powder on standby. Just something that's a little more translucent so that you don't have to add another color. So I'm taking my refer brush with a little bit of the loose powder, LM2. And on the edges here, just to blur out the color a little bit, if you want it to look more refined, you can do that as well. I just like to use the actual color. So I'm patting down a little more here because this is where it gets a little funny, is, you know, is my rehearsal eye. If you have interstellar icon, if you haven't used it all year, what are you doing? And weren't sure about how to use Hypnotique well. I love to bring Hypnotique in on the inner corner, overlapping with Divine Dahlia. Isn't that a beautiful combination? So this could be your standout inner corner highlight shade, or it could be your standout inner lower lash line shade. As you see here, I got a little bit of fall or fallout, so I'm just kicking off what I can in an upward motion. You could also wet this shade so that it could apply super slick and shiny and be ultra dazzling on the skin. And why not? Let's go in with Blue Blood. We'll have Blue Blood as our standout lower lash line shade, connecting that with Hypnotique and Divine Dahlia. Oh, that's lovely. But it's a lot. You know, this is like very punchy it has a lot of character whereas i feel you could just do rose nocturne all over the eye and it'd be a lot softer but if you don't like rose nocturne if you prefer the cooler shades regardless of they look the same or not then you just stick with interstellar icon you know what i mean taking a little bit of pat's concealer because i just want to do a little shaping because i want to refine 
Hypnotique a little bit. And now going back with Hypnotique, smaller brush. So I have a little more control here. All right, eye number one done. I wanted to quickly demonstrate what it would look like to just use Rose Nocturne all over the eyes. So with that, I'm taking my reference number 16 again, my blender brush. I'll start with, let's just start with the crease first. How about that? If you just wanted to use one color, then Rose Nocturne is lovely on its own. It's, it definitely has retro feels because it's that beautiful burgundy color. Whereas I think the shade from uh, Manny's palette was a little more red. And I also recognize this. This is like a smaller, more curated version of Natasha Denona's star palette. Hold on. Phoenix is the shade that kind of reminds me of Rose Nocturne. Oh, but Rose Nocturne has a little more punch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again. I'm layering them so you can see the shades well. You could kind of make out the the differences yeah there's a little more depth to rose nocturne it just looks a little more full-bodied but now natasha has orion which is that classic teal with maroon base there we go i feel there's a little more slide from pats there's a little more shine from pats too maybe because this is an older palette you know what i mean I'm just gonna reapply both here, both Alien Moon and Orion. So here we go, Alien Moon and Orion. They're the same color, like they're, it's the same intention to have the maroon base with the teal flip. I mentioned that on my first video, like we've seen this color before. We haven't seen it yet from Pat, but I'm sure we have the shade 10 times over and you know what? Some of us don't care. It's all good in the neighborhood and you're gonna do whatever you want, okay? And I support that. Rose Nocturne on the lower lash line here. I removed my eye makeup a few times today because I also did some demos for my Bishoto and Tonsedo brushes. This is from reapplying and applying unfortunately that's just you know this the way it goes cyber bronze i think because i actually did this in a brush demo that you will see in an upcoming video hang on tight with rose nocturne amazingly beautiful i apply it here all over the lid and i think these two shades are lovely together this brush is a little soft so i'm going in with my finger to get on more product Ooh, Cyber Bronze is more of like a copper feeling bronze. As like, for instance, like Divine Dahlia has more antique, like that taupey type of a bronze. And this color is more of like that sunshine bronze. And if you wanted to incorporate Alien Moon in a way, you could apply Alien Moon here on the lower lash line because since the base is the same color practically as Rose Nocturne, they'll flow beautifully with each other. You could do it just inner, or you could pull it all the way across. And then with Golden Aurora again on the inner corner for the highlight. You know what I wanna do? I wanna apply a little bit of black coffee on the deep divinity side, deep space divinity, excuse me. I just wanna add I don't know how much black coffee will show over Rose Nocturne. Oh, I think it's gonna show pretty well. I'm gonna blend that out, take it up, pull it in. All right, that, that wing went really high. Okay, gonna apply these lashes and I'll be right back. Here's the final look from demo number two, showcasing mostly Divine Dahlia from Interstellar Icon and Rose Nocturne with Cyber Bronze from Deep Space Divinity. Again, I just hope this provided some clarity if you are wondering about the two palettes, if you needed both, if you needed neither. I would say if you already have Natasha Denona's star palette, you can definitely create this for sure with 
Phoenix and Orion and Natasha has these other gold shades that you could use under the lash line like I did or rather on the lid or under the lash line however you want and not even from Natasha Denona I'm sure you have these colors from other brands and if you are a singles collector if you don't do palettes then you can definitely create this color story from the singles that you have I'm sure now if you don't have a lot of eyeshadow and you don't have anything from Pat McGrath Labs I do think between the two Deep Space is a little more approachable in terms of the colors that are provided and the textures. Interstellar Icon has a lot more va va voom, especially with, with Blue Blood. I mean, that is just gorgeous on its own all over the lid and crease. Hypnotique is a much brighter blue than Alien Moon, so maybe you feel a little more comfortable with Alien Moon because of that maroon base and its presence just kind of grounds the color a little more versus hypnotique it's just straight up blue with a little bit of that purple flip which i think as you saw in the first demo pairs lovely with blue blood and then forget it divine dahlia one of my most favorite shades ever found in the pat mcgrath labs eyeshadow collection it has the topiness but it also has beautiful sparkle too especially if you just let it settle Oh my god. And listen, if you happen to buy both or if you have this color from another collection and you have Interstellar Icon, maybe you could experiment applying that more maroon shade. Maybe you could just hop in to re retro, okay? Because O Part doesn't exactly look like Divine Dahlia. It has more of like a a more brown taupey hue to it and not as sparkly. O Part is more like the cream to matte formula from Natasha but paired with any of the burgundies in there, oh my gosh. So I would say don't rush to buy Deep Space Divinity. Wait until it goes on sale if you want it. I would say the star products of this collection, definitely Celestial Odyssey 18 Pan Palette, the highlighter, which is out of this world gorgeous. I have it on today, Lunar Nude. The embossing and the compact is just stunning. I do wish they did the hieroglyphics on the gold as well. Again, maybe could have been a manufacturing issue. I don't know. The blush trios, although not in the luxe packaging, I think are the biggest hits out of this collection. People love these because a lot of you skipped out on the blush singles, which I think was wise. You know, I would have bought them all anyway. I was nice enough to receive three from the brand, but I bought the rest. Not practical to do, I understand. I am a hardcore fan that just loses her mind when it comes to Pat McGrath Labs, but this is such a great opportunity if you purposefully skipped on the singles, whether it be budget reasons or you were just waiting for this palette to arrive. Two blush shades and one highlighter well four and all because you have two other blush shades found in galactic sun with golden nectar the highlighter shade for that palette you have venus nectar here in amber allure just very easy accessible and modest all around i think great as a gift either for yourself or someone else that i feel is this is the standout item out of the whole collection i would say second is the celestial odyssey palette because a lot of the shades are there are just beautiful in terms of the texture and the finish and i will put the highlighter third because i think that shade although beautiful I don't know how many skin tones it's going to cover because I do appreciate, and someone had pointed this out, and they're right, that it's nice to go a little more pinky in the winter if I want the entire look to just be cooler in nature. Not as cool as what's found in champagne gold from last year. This is not champagne gold. This is like silver gold, okay? But the compact though, fam, I go back and forth with how I would rank this product out of the whole collection. And then I would put the, the quads last, I would. Again, I think people are not enthusiastic about the smaller pan size overall, the fact that you get less product, that they look like quads that were previously released. So I get it, fam. Wait on them. If you were thinking about grabbing them, you don't have to do so right away. I would focus more on the highlighter, the blush trios, and the big 18 pan palette. Let me know if you need anything else from me in terms of swatches and comparisons. I still have to catch up on a lot of comments left on my last video, so I apologize for the delay. I will get to those as quickly as possible. But until then, fam, I'll see you down there. And that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. 
to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial, Pat McGrath Labs Lux Quad Extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.